Welcome, everybody. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about how to be a better WordPress developer than you already are. Um, the talk is focused at developers that, of all levels, so whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced, hopefully this talk will have a little bit of something for you, a little bit of something for every level. So sit back and enjoy. Um, so why am I here? Uh, I've been developing with WordPress since about 2007. Uh, started building high-scale uh, WordPress client sites and custom plugins um, uh, as a freelancer and working with a couple of agencies. And about three months ago, I joined Automatic as a code wrangler. And I'm really here just to share the experience and knowledge that I've gathered over the years. So what is WordPress development? You often hear these buzzwords, themes, plugins, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, uh, HTML5, CSS3, MySQL, blah, 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 blah. It goes on and on. Um, but it's really important that all of these things come together uh, when you're building WordPress sites. So uh, you could know HTML really well, or you could know PHP really well, but unless you're a very, very focused developer, that's not really going to help you. You really should know all of the different technologies and how to integrate them uh, together. So one of the main things that you should be comfortable with as a WordPress developer is obviously WordPress core. Uh, you know, that's what runs whatever site, theme, plugin uh, that you're building, and it's important to be comfortable with it. Um, so the first rule with core is not to hack core. Uh, every time you hack core, God kills a kitten. So think of the kittens, don't hack core. Instead, you should be contributing to core. Um, contributing to core makes you feel good, and it helps others in the community. WordPress is, as you probably all know, an open source platform, meaning that anybody can contribute to it. Uh, the code is freely accessible and freely redistributable. redistributable. Um, and a really good way to sort of give back to the community for everything that it does for you is to contribute back. And a lot of people, I think, get scared by the idea of contributing to core. They either think they're not good enough or that they'll get a bad code review on whatever they submit, but really there's all kinds of different ways to contribute to Core, and all of them are extremely welcoming, and the more contributors there are, the better the platform will get. Um, so a couple of ways that you can contribute is by submitting a ticket or a bug report. So to do that, you would go on track.wordpress.org, which is uh, sort of the project management tool that we use to keep track of WordPress, uh, the open source project. Along with your ticket or bug report, you can write a patch to submit uh, uh, as sort of the fix for the bug that you're reporting. Um, or you can find a ticket or a bug report that doesn't already have a patch and submit that. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the details of how to do that, um, but there is a really handy uh, tool that I'll mention in one of the next slides uh, that sort of explains everything you need to know about contributing to Core, and I uh, recommend that. Um, as a way to sort of get familiar. Um, other ways that you can contribute are answering support form questions. So if you go on the wordpress.org support forums, uh, there's lots of beginner users who might not understand how something works, or more intermediate or even advanced users who just have complicated questions, and you can go ahead and just answer the questions. You'll learn, they'll learn the process, and everybody wins at the end. Uh, or you can help to document something. So. Uh, whether it be through the WordPress uh, codex or through the uh, contributor handbook, which I'm going to mention in a minute, um, you can basically help others by documenting something you've learned, a uh, function, a feature in WordPress, anything that might not necessarily be properly documented already. So uh, WordPress has a lot of tickets. Um, anybody seen this guy before? So he's sort of a running joke in the uh, development world, not necessarily WordPress specific, but for uh, sort of the grammar Nazis that uh, have seen the word or the two words a lot misspelled. This monster sort of came out as an image of a lot. So when we reached a 20,000 ticket milestone in the WordPress project, Nathan, who's one of the uh, lead core contributors of WordPress posted this ticket as sort of an inside joke. We have a lot of tickets. So it's fine that there is a lot of tickets on the WordPress.org track. We encourage that. We want people to submit ideas, submit bugs. Uh, even if it's a duplicate ticket, don't worry about it. Somebody will realize that it's duplicate, close it, or comment, or say, oh, can you provide more details about your ticket, whatever it is. Um, don't be afraid to open one up. Obviously, don't 
like report a bug that's specific to your installation or something like that. Make sure that it's actually a core uh, bug before you submit it. But if you're sure that it's a, a core bug or a core improvement that you want to see, then go ahead and submit it. And so the best way to learn about how to contribute to core is uh, the core contributor handbook. So about, I want to say, two or three weeks ago, uh, make.wordpress.org was sort of reborn from the ashes as this network of little sites that bring different types of contributors into one place. Um, so there's uh, make.wordpress.org site for plugin developers, for theme developers, for people who want to translate WordPress, for people who want to contribute to core, for accessibility experts, for all kinds of different things. Um, so if you go on make.wordpress.org, you can see all of the different ways that you can contribute to core. And a good way to start is to read the handbook, which sort of goes through the, the traditions and the um, uh, the habits and the methods used to contribute to core. So I highly recommend that for anybody who doesn't necessarily know about uh, how WordPress is built and how it's done. So moving on, um, using core to your advantage. Um, so you're a WordPress developer for a reason. It's because you like to use WordPress to develop. You want to use the features that it has to your advantage. So there's a lot of built-in APIs not, not nearly all of them are listed on here, but these are just some of the examples of what you can do uh, with WordPress functions that it gives you uh, that you can use. So there's the WP HTTP API, uh, which basically allows you to wrap uh, post and get uh, calls to other web pages to fetch data. You have the file system API, which you shouldn't really manipulate files within WordPress, but if you need to, uh, there's a good way to do it there. Uh, the settings API, so you shouldn't be writing your own functions to save uh, options to the database or do any of the setting pages. It's all there for you. There's an API for it, so you should use it. Obviously, custom post types and taxonomies, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Uh, and again, you shouldn't necessarily be manipulating the database directly, uh, but in some instances, you might need to. So use the WPDB class. Uh, instead of doing like you know the old school PHP MySQL connect and all this fancy stuff, it's all there already in WordPress because WordPress uses it. Well, you might as well use the API that it provides, and really a lot more uh, different APIs that you can use: widgets, menus, uh, taxonomies, etc. There's tons of different APIs that you can use, and the best way to find all of those is to just go through Core, read. You don't have to read every single line of code, but just you know, peek out what's in the file, see what's there, what's available. Um, it's a really good way to learn. So hooks are really the main architecture for developing additional features or modifying existing behavior within WordPress. So I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes explaining how they work. Uh, some of you are probably already familiar with them, but it's just sort of a, a a recap or an overview of how hooks work. So there's basically two different types of hooks, uh, action hooks and filter hooks. Action hooks allow you to run arbitrary code at a specific point during the WordPress code execution. So somewhere in code, there's this line, do action WP head. And when that action fires, you can basically append or add code that will run at that point in the WordPress code execution. So here, I'm adding an action to WP head called jkudish head. And I'm going to explain uh, in one of the next slides exactly what's going on behind the scenes and how to, how to understand how that works. Filters hook uh, allow you to modify a variable before it's output, saved, used, whatever. So a, a misconception that I've sometimes heard in the WordPress world is that filters are only used for variables or things that are going to be output in a template, but that's not true. Uh, you can modify uh, you can filter a variable at any point in the code execution before it's inserted into the database, before you use it in, a, in another function, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, it basically allows you to filter any type of variable at that specific moment. It can be an array, it can be a string, it can be an object, although that gets a little weird. Um, and so the syntax for that is similar to the uh, do action. Instead here you have apply filters, uh, the, uh, the name of the filter and then uh, the variable that you're going to filter. So in this case, I'm filtering the post content variable uh, through a filter called the content, and then I'm hooking my jkudish filter onto that uh, hook. So a little bit more into the in-depth of how the hooks API works. 
there's basically a few different components to it. Um, so do action only requires one argument, which is the name of the action that you want to happen. But you can optionally pass in a number of additional arguments that will then be available within the function that you hook onto that action. So for example, uh, say I'm passing in, uh, I'm creating an action at the time when I register a post type, I want to allow other developers to do things at that moment. Uh, I can pass in the additional argument that might be the name of the custom post type that I'm registering, for example. Uh, and the same thing, uh, uh, sorry, just to go back to that for one second, you can actually pass in uh, as many uh, arguments as you want. So you, you can have one additional argument, two, three, 10, 15, 20. Uh, obviously, I don't know why you would pass in 20 at that point. It's probably smarter to just pass in an array. But uh, there's not really a, a hard limit on how many additional arguments that you can pass in that way. And then uh, the apply filters function works the exact same way. So you have the name of the filter, and then uh, this, it does have two required uh, arguments. The second one being the variable that you're trying to filter, obviously. And then the same thing as with the, with the um, action is you can pass in uh, additional arguments, as many as you want, that would then be available to the filter. Now, remember that you're not filtering those additional arguments. Uh, they're just available as to provide a context to the other developer who might be extending or filtering your existing variable. And so it's really easy to uh, register hooks. To do it, you just do add action, and then the name of the action that uh, you want to hook into, and then the name of your callback function that's going to run uh, at the time of, that, of the execution of the action. And then there's two optional parameters, the first one being the priority, uh, which de always defaults to 10, and then the number of additional arguments, which uh, by default is going to be one. So by default, you're going to pass in one additional argument, but if you're, you're the, filter or the filter or the action accepts additional arguments, then you would modify this. So for example, in this example where I have two additional arguments, this value, which right now is at three, would be two, because I'm passing in two additional arguments that I want to be available to my callback function. And the exact same uh, syntax applies to filters, except instead of add action, it's add filter. And then uh, your callback function, uh, you basically declare a function like you would any other, and then pass in, if you're doing a filter, you would pass in the value that you're wanting to filter. Or if uh, it's just an action, or if you have additional arguments, you would pass those in as well. And remember that with a filter, uh, you want to return that variable value. You want to return it at the end since you're doing stuff to that value, or, or at least that's the assumption, is that you're going to modify that value. So you want to return it so that when it goes through the apply filters function, it has that variable back. Um, so it's important to find the right hooks when you're working with uh, uh, the hook system. Uh, Yannick covered a little bit about the right hooks to use for like jQuery uh, in, uh, in queuing this morning, uh, for those of you, of you who are in the presentation. But really, the best way to find uh, hooks is basically just to search through core. Through core. Find what file or uh, what moment in the WordPress execution you're trying to do something and find the action or the, f uh, the hook that, you're, that you want to uh, hook into. Of course, if you don't want to search through core, there's other references that you can use. The plugin API in the codex is a good one. Uh, Adam Brown's hooks database is another good one. And the WP Candy article on hooks, which isn't really so much a reference, but more of a teaching tool. So if you were completely confused by what I, everything I just explained, go check that article out. It might do a better job than I just did. Um, and uh, I didn't say this at the beginning, but all these slides are available on slides.jkudish.com. So uh, don't feel like you need to rush and write all of these uh, resources down. Um, a really cool and just handy uh, action or sort of e almost an Easter egg that exists in the WordPress code is there's an action called all, which fires for every action. So whenever an action fires, this action also fires, uh, as well as filters, not just action. So whatever, any hooks that run, the all hook will also run. So you can hook into that and then do clever stuff like uh, print to the error log the current filter so that you can know exactly when a certain filter runs. 
And there's a bunch of other helpers that you can use as well to help you uh, sort of understand when a hook has run uh, or remove an existing hook. So has action will check whether uh, any actions are registered to a certain hook. Uh, has filter will do the same, but for filters, did action will tell you whether uh, a certain action has already run. And this, the did action works for filters as well. And then you have uh, functions to remove. So you can remove a specific action, you can remove all actions or remove all filters from an existing hook. And be careful when you use those because you might remove something that you didn't mean to. It, for example, if you're a plugin developer and you call remove all actions on a specific action, it will remove all the actions from all plugins, all themes that run on that specific hook. So just use that sparingly. All right, so enough about hooks. Um, one of the things that you want to know as a WordPress developer is where to put your code. So there's kind of two main places that they could go, either in a theme or in a plugin. So if usually, and this obviously can vary from situation to situation, so don't take this as a hard standard, but it's sort of an accepted, you know, this is how you, things are usually done. Uh, themes are used for templates that will be used to display uh, on the front end and for all related helper functions that might help you display that data. Plugins uh, are for code that can be toggled on and off and modify the behavior of WordPress in some way or provide additional functionality. Um, and then there's the MU plugins, which is, despite its name, is not only for multi-site. It stands for must use plugins. And it's just like the regular plugins folder, except anything that you put in there will automatically load to, on each page load. So, uh, and it doesn't provide any kind of auto update functionality. So anything that you put into MU plugins will always run for that site, uh, and it won't necessarily appear in the plugins UI either. So use that sparingly, but it's useful for things like registering custom post types or modifying things in the admin that you want to always run. You don't want, if you're building sites for clients, you don't want your clients to accidentally deactivate that plugin or something like that. It's really handy for codes that absolutely must run on each uh, page load. Um, when you're building sites, themes, plugins, you probably want to know when you're doing something wrong. Uh, so Core does a lot of that have you work for you. If you turn on the WP debug constant uh, on in the wp-config.php file, it will give you all the PHP notices, PHP errors, warnings, deprecated files, deprecated functions that you might be calling um, improperly or by accident. Uh, so if in your development environments, this should absolutely be on. One of my favorite functions in WordPress is the doing it wrong function which basically will tell you when you're doing something wrong. Um, you can incorporate this function in your own uh, plugins. So for example, if you have an, an API that you provide within your plugin for other developers to use, and you think that they might be doing something wrong, you should check out this function to let other developers know that you're doing something wrong. And then of course there's unit tests, which uh, I haven't really seen many people use unfortunately. And it's something that I'd like to see grow in the WordPress community. And there's a big effort on that from within uh, the core developers of WordPress. There's a whole unit test uh, framework that has been developed to run tests on WordPress core. And that framework is currently being rewritten so that it can also work with plugins. So plugin developers can write unit tests for their, plug uh, yeah, for their plugins. Anyway, that's sort of a complicated round that I'm not going to jump into because we could spend hours talking about it. Uh, and if you want to know a little bit more about debugging, you should check out uh, Mo's presentation. It's uh, up next right after mine. Code is poetry. That's sort of one of the main uh, sayings within the WordPress development wor world. So what does that mean? What, what do we mean when we say code is poetry? Um, it means that you have to make things legible, classy, and elegant. And to do that, you should follow the WordPress coding standards. So I'm going to go through uh, all of the standards that are listed also on the codex. Um, so the first one is uh, the long form PHP versus the small form PHP opening bracket. So within WordPress, the standard is to always use the long PHP uh, opening bracket. Uh, the short one doesn't work within all hosts. So if you're writing any kind of code that might be redistributed through a plugin, a theme, whatever, uh, the safer option is always to use the longer form. And that's sort of the standard that's been adapted within core and within plugin developers as well. Um, single quotes, unless you need to evaluate a variable. So if you're writing a string, uh, 
there's no reason to use double quotes unless there's a variable in the middle, or uh, you might need to escape a single quote otherwise. So in this example, uh, where I have, I'm setting the name of my dog, which is Winston, that's actually my dog's name, and then my dog's name is dog name. Uh, in this case, if I use single quotes, it would completely break because I have a single quote that would end my string, and then I also have a variable in there. So in this case, uh, you do want to use double quotes. But unless you absolutely need to, the standard is to use a single quote. Naming is really important. Uh, so don't name things haphazardly. If other people are going to read your code, try to make it very logical uh, so that people know what your variables, your functions are, uh, and not just like like what Jeremy did in the previous talk, option one, option two, or var one, var two. Nobody's gonna know what that is. Try to name your variables in a way that makes sense. And also follow the standard, which says uh, you separate words by, with underscores, and you don't camel case or uppercase or whatever. So all of these are examples of things you absolutely shouldn't do. Camel case, uppercase, complete crap, and then the actual thing that you're supposed to do. Um, and similarly to naming, spacing really increases uh, readability, uh, makes things really easy to read. So the first one, uh, it, it's an okay way to do it, you know, for each, and then you pass posts as, as posts. You know, that's fine, you can read, you know what's going on. But the correct standard is uh, to use uh, spaces between uh, parameters that you pass within a function. So always opening bracket space and then a space again before the closing bracket. Uh, and then um, for loops, if statements, et cetera, always have a space before the opening bracket, but regular functions don't. Uh, so say, I, say that was gonna be uh, my function, then there wouldn't be a space before the opening bracket. And again, just examples of really crap, crappy code that you shouldn't do. <laughs> Uh, and in sort of in the same vein, brackets, uh, indentation, and empty line are important. So this is a perfect example of what you should do. Uh, so nice and, uh, and legible uh, spaces, empty lines between uh, different statements, uh, brackets to indicate uh, when an if statement starts and ends, et cetera. Uh, you don't need those, I've seen developers do like uh, a comment at the end of their if statement saying if statement ends, but that doesn't add any kind of indication to other developers. All it does is clubber up the code. If I see a closing bracket, I know that the if statement that's declared right above has ended. That's pretty logical. And if you're using uh, any kind of smart code editor or an IDE, then you get other things like highlighting. So if I put my cursor on the if statement, well, it shows me exactly where it ends. Uh, so don't clubber up your code with useless comments. Uh, Yoda conditions, so if you're doing an F statement, uh, always put whatever you're checking against as the first argument, and then the thing that you want to check as the second argument. So what happens if you put uh, only one equal sign? Uh, then you accidentally assign the city variable to Montreal. Instead, if you check Montreal uh, is city, then you don't incur the uh, possibility of making that kind of mistake. So the standard for uh, WordPress development is to always use these, what's called Yoda conditions, because you're kind of speaking like Yoda would. Uh, don't get too clever. So how many of you understand what that statement does without reading what's below? One hand, two hands. So really not that many hands. Um, whereas how many of you understand the below? A lot more hands. So <laughs> they do the exact same thing, but the first one is, it, really hard to decrypt and understand what it's doing. So instead, you know, don't be too clever. Try to do things in a logical way that people will be able to read and understand. And uh, sort of as a closing note to the Coders Poetry uh, Act of my presentation, keep it elegant, simple, and avoid useless comments. So don't add comments of things that are completely obvious by reading your code. You should only comment things, either you're doing PHP block, which is really handy for IDEs, or comments that really, you're doing something complicated that other developers might not understand. In that case, it warrants having a comment. This is an example of what not to do. Globalizing an options variable using deprecated functions like get settings, uh, assigning variables conditionally, uh, using uppercase false, doing all kinds of things wrong in this example. This is actually from a theme forest theme. So <laughs> it is code that actually runs on websites. Don't do this. 
And the, uh, this is more an example of what to do right. So a nice uh, wrapped class, uh, for those of you who might not be familiar with object-oriented code, it's pretty simple. You're just basically encapsulating regular functions in a class that then makes it easier so that you don't have to namespace every single function, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, um, this is sort of a, an example of what to do right. Uh, you're returning early within the function if you need to, uh, not doing long if conditional statements, uh, naming things properly, et cetera, and namespacing things properly. So here I have a class WP my house, uh, just as an example. So there's a lot of things that you should be doing that are beyond regular standards. <laughs> the first thing is uh, when you're inserting stuff into the database, it, you want to make sure that what you're going to insert is properly formatted. It's not going to create a MySQL injection. You want to make sure that st stuff you're doing is secure. Uh, so to do that, there's different helper functions that vary depending on the situation or the context in which you're entering things. Uh, so some of those are, if this is for direct SQL uh, statements. If you're uh, inserting something into the database, you should escape uh, any variables that you're going to enter with WPDB escape method. Or if you're, you have a full uh, SQL statement with some variables inside, you should use WPDB prepare. I'm not going to go through the syntax of it. You should look it up if you're not familiar with it. But just make sure that you're doing this stuff properly. There's so much unsecure code out there. You, all of you here in this room should be writing secure code. And that's what I want you to take away from this part of the presentation. And then there's uh, sanitize functions. Uh, so sanitize title, sanitize post, sanitize uh, different things depending on the scenario. Uh, so these are uh, to be used with uh, n not when doing direct SQL queries, but like, um, for example, you're using WP insert post. Well, uh, it uses the sanitize title before inserting the title in the uh, database. So those are the kinds of things that you should be aware of. And then escape all the things. So that was more on the input into the database. Now uh, on the output from the database, uh, you can generally more or less assume that the data you're going to get will be of a certain type or that it will confirm to the standard that you're expecting it to be. Uh, but uh, in some cases, you re really need to be careful and make sure, you know, validate and clean up whatever data is coming from the database. You can't guarantee that it's going to be what you want it to be. So there's a bunch of different functions that you should be using uh, to basically clean up that data. So escape attribute is one. Uh, for example, if you're doing like a, um, a class within uh, an, so say you have a class, I'm talking HTML here, by the way, a class, and then you go escape attribute in the name of the class that you might be passing in. Uh, and then you have escape URL if you're, if you're doing an href, uh, inval, which allows you to make sure the value is an integer, WP cases, which strips unwanted HTML tags, escape HTML, escape JS, escape URL, escape text area, escape all the things. So there's a full list in, on the codex. Or if you go in the WP include slash formatting uh, file, uh, there you, that's where most of the escaping functions, though not all of them, are located in the core. So, just make sure that you familiarize yourself and uh, don't break sites by not escaping data. Internationalization. Uh, so Yannick touched, touched a little bit on this topic this morning. But for those of you who weren't in that presentation, what internationalization is is basically making sure that any strings that you display are uh, made available for translators to translate. Uh, so the WordPress provides a bunch of helper functions uh, to do that. Uh, the two sort of basic ones being underscore, underscore, and underscore E, uh, which do the exact same thing except double underscore returns the string and underscore E echoes that string. Um, so just a, a quick little run through the syntax. Uh, you pass in the string, uh, you then pass in the text domain for your plugin theme or whatever you're writing. So WordPress core doesn't have a text domain, so whatever strings WordPress core uses are just passed it would basically skip that second part of the functions. But if you're writing a plugin that you might restrict, you want a text domain so that when the internal WordPress functions that look for translations, look for the right uh, files that are associated with your translation. So uh, there's a whole topic on uh, 
WordPress uh, sorry, internationalization for WordPress development on the codex, which kind of goes into a little bit more details. Uh, but basically how it works is that, uh, so you write all of your um, strings with these interna internationalization helpers, and then uh, you pass your, all of your plugin files to a program called PO Edit, and there's others, but that's sort of the one that's used most of the time. And then it looks for those functions, looks for the strings inside of them, parses them out into a, a plain text file that does a little bit of fancy stuff. And uh, then that file is used as a template for translators to translate the strings within uh, your plugin. So that's sort of how the basics of how it works. But again, more details on that codex page. And there's a couple of other helper functions. Not all of them are listed here, but that might uh, be more useful in certain situations. So one of them is the underscore n function. So that allows you to provide two different strings based on whether something is plural or not. So in this case, I'm looking at the common count variable. If it's plural, it's going to use the, the plural string comments. If it's singular, it's going to use the single string comment. And then a little bit more advanced of an example. Uh, so here I'm doing two different sort of more advanced things at the same time. But so the underscore x uh, function allows you to specify a context to your function so that when translators are looking at that string, they kind of get an idea of what context that string might appear in without having to go and open up the PHP file where you have all the code, and then they still may or may not know what the context is. So this allows you to um, specify a context. So here I'm doing hello world, and then I'm specifying the context as intro to the world. So intro to the world is not going to be translated. That's just for other translators. When they look at the uh, translation template called the uh, MO file, they're going to look at that and uh, sort of get an idea of what the con context is. And then again, just as before, I'm passing uh, the context, or sorry, the text domain. Then the other thing that I'm doing in this, in this particular example is uh, using the PHP printf, which could be replaced with uh, sprint or sprint. I, don't, I never know what it's called. One of those things that you never have to say out loud. Um, so printf will echo the string, and sprintf will return it. And then I'm passing the parentheses s is basically going to be replaced with the word uh, that's assigned to the mood variable. And so uh, what I should have actually done is also uh, internationalize the cruel uh, string, but I, it was just a quick example. But in this case, uh, I can basically dynamically, based on a certain if statement that's not in this example, uh, decide what the string is going to be uh, within that hello world uh, string, because when the, trans when the translation fu functions run within WordPress, it's before any dynamic variables or, or any dynamic logic is uh, parsed. So if I do hello mood world and it p pass in that exact variable mood in here, it's not going to work. Um, so this is the better way to do it. And then finally, uh, as a plugin or a theme developer, you should always leave hooks just like Core does so that others can extend your code. Obviously, this doesn't apply if you're doing like some really fancy enterprise thing that nobody's ever going to see. But if you're doing any kind of open source uh, work, which you should be doing, I make sure to leave lots of hooks and filters for other people to sort of work off of that. And this leads me to my, my final slide, which really I encourage you to open source everything that you do, except your client's password files. Um, you, know, you might be working for a client, but whatever work that you did is, can be used by others. Uh, even if it's not 100% you know, polished or 100% finished, it's going to help others. And uh, one of the things that you'll get out of that is the ability to do co-reviews for each other. And a really good way to do that is by publishing your stuff either on the plugins repository on WordPress.org or on the GitHub uh, uh, on GitHub, which is a really, really nice tool for developers uh, to sort of share and fork and collaborate on different things, which really is what WordPress is all about. So before we do the Q&A, I just quickly want to mention uh, a site called CodePoet, which uh, some of you may be familiar with or might not be. Uh, so CodePoet is a site uh, that is built by Automatic, but is sort of um, a resource for uh, WordPress developers to 
uh, look at ebooks, which sort of have uh, tutorials or experts' advice on different things. So we had like an ebook on security, uh, we had an ebook on performance, and then there's also interviews, resources, and podcasts are coming soon um, to that site. And you can also do a quiz, uh, which it's sort of a fun trivia thing to um, know how you're doing within the WordPress development world. It, obviously, it's not you know, a hard ranking of how you're doing, but it's just something fun to do if you're in that kind of thing. So any uh, developers should absolutely check that out. Yeah.